on your romance as you lost in an Asian trance. So we're breaking the spell with a K-pop dance. In our booty pants. That song was part of a recent episode of Family Guy, an Emmy Award-winning American animated series that recently aired an episode that took place right here in South Korea. After it was revealed that one of the show's characters appeared on Korean television while serving as a member of the U.S. military. You were on a Korean soap opera? Yeah, back when the Navy had me stationed in Busan, I saw an ad in the paper for guys over 5'4", and I was the only one who showed up. Next thing I know, I'm on TV playing a guy named American Johnny. Quagmire, you speak Korean? Nah, not really. They just told me how to sound the words out phonetically. The Family Guy episode then follows the group as they travel to South Korea in search of that final episode of their friend's soap opera. Quagmire, give me the last tape. Huh. Sorry, guys, there are no more tapes. What do we do? Quagmire, tell us what happened. Did he son live to have the baby? Did Kim secure a position at the hydroelectric plant? I don't know. I don't remember. It was 20 years ago. We shot out of order. I, I never even knew what I was saying. I didn't care. I was living the life. Just banging chicks and eating cabbage, you know. With such lines as the one we just heard, it's easy to see how not everyone may have enjoyed Family Guy's portrayal of Korean culture. And I spoke with two Korean organizations to find out what they thought of the episode. My name is Steve King, and I'm the deputy director at the Korean American Coalition in Los Angeles, California. For the past 32 years, we've been the main advocacy organization for the Korean American community here in Southern California, especially within the Korean American community here in Los Angeles, which is the largest in the United States. Um, the episode generated a bit of a controversy that although um, K-pop, especially uh, in light of the episode, is important um, for the Korean culture and it's an, integri- uh, it's an important aspect of the economy as well, but it's not all about this image that is being portrayed of sex and just dancing. And um, So I, I feel like um, the community doesn't appreciate the fact that a lot of the Western um, television or programming sort of tends to focus a little bit too much on the choreograph, like the choreograph dance moves and a lot of the risque sort of um, the routines that are portrayed by some of these idol groups. I mean, I was just um, very happy that um, despite some of the controversy that erupted from the scenes of the episode, the fact that they portrayed uh, Koreans and they fo- really focused on um, a lot of the Korean cultures and uh, like the food or some of the dancing or some of the other cultural aspects that really highlight uh, that Korea is now becoming uh, a hot and uh, trendy place um, within the international community. And I r- really appreciate the producer for even uh, considering uh, choosing Korea as a subject matter for one of their episodes. However, if they're trying to portray a different culture in a different country, it, it should be uh, noted that they should uh, actually interact with the people or the citizens of that co- specific community, as well as uh, trying to understand and trying to approach it in a manner that isn't so insensitive or controversial. And um, the exploitation or the usage of sex uh, symbolism within the episode, I thought some of it um, went a little overboard than um, it should have. While Family Guy's portrayal of South Korea has been criticized, it's also received other positive feedback. My name is Sam Yoon. I'm executive director of the Council of Korean Americans. And the Council of Korean Americans is a membership organization of um, highly accomplished Korean Americans from um, here in, uh, in the U.S. and around the world. And our function is to be a voice for the Korean American community. From a personal perspective, I actually thought the content revealed incredible influence of, of Korean culture, um, or Hallyu, uh, and how it's penetrated American mainstream culture. I think it's really recognizing um, that you know, all aspects of Korean culture is, is kind of what's new, it's what's next, it's, it's noteworthy. You know, were there some parts of the episode that I found, you know, a little, little edgy or, you know, bordering on offensive? Yeah, definitely. You know, but on balance, overall, I don't, I don't think the episode was offensive on balance. The Ashton Kutcher doing a commercial about eating dog. So, yeah, that, that clearly, like, 
that praise on this stereotype that's been out there for such a long time about Koreans and dogs and stuff. So I found that mildly offensive, you know. But but at the same time, I was wondering, you know, are they really making fun of Koreans or are they making fun of the, this myth that all Koreans eat dogs? You know, I don't know. <laughs> but I think that's that's one point at which I was like, hmm, this may be taking things a little bit too far. Hi. I'm Ashton Kutcher. Have you ever killed a dog while driving drunk and then been upset that there was no way for your car engine to cook it for you on the rest of the drive home? Well, those days are over. Thanks to Dr. Lee's Pet Engine Cooking Bag. Just put the dog in the bag, place it over the engine block, and drive your usual 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. I contacted 20th Century Fox Television, the company that distributes Family Guy, for a description of how the episode was researched and why South Korea was chosen as a location. Originally, Fox declined to comment, but then issued this statement from Steve Callahan and Rich Appel, two of Family Guy's executive producers. We spend a ton of time in the writer's room at Family Guy trying to think of original stories for the show. We long ago thought we'd run out of material to steal from our own lives, until a year ago, one of our writers, Chris Reagan, casually mentioned that in the mid-90s, he had appeared in an episode of a South Korean soap opera called Beautiful Vacation. Why he had waited years to tell us this was not immediately clear, but we knew that his experience could lead to a fun story for one of our characters. Over the next few weeks, this episode was born. Family Guy has a number of Korean-American artists, including co-executive producer Peter Shin, who oversees all animation for the series, as well as the director of this particular episode, Joseph Lee. We knew that they would take special care to ensure that the episode felt authentic, we were also lucky that Margaret Cho, a Korean-American actress and comedian, agreed to play the part of Quagmire's former co-star and love interest. And finally, Council of Korean-Americans director Sam Yoon says despite some offensive material, he thinks the episode was appropriately researched. I mean, I think the animation studio uh, that does, that produces Family Guy is Korean, right? The Simpsons is in Korea, a whole bunch of other animation series or pen and ink or whatever they use by Korean animators. So I can imagine, yes, that they had a field day doing this, uh, but they were essentially the built-in check against something being just out and out offensive. You know, I checked Twitter just to see what the Twitterverse is saying. Um, and what I'm seeing is a lot of praise. <laughs> and then you know, I saw something that the Korea Times even said, hey, guess what? You know, this is the K-pop group that they showcased on this episode of Family Guy, almost as if to say, hey, you know, like, how cool is that, right? So, you know, by and large, all those ways that this episode is pointing out, um, you know, the, the style of, of K-pop or the mannerisms of uh, Korean culture, um, you know, it is recognizable, um, and it kind of pokes fun at it in some ways, but you know, for the most part, I think you're you're seeing the humor in it. 